Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about applications of recombinant technology in human health. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. Uh, so here we have a common funda. Just take an expression vector. Say it is a plasmid vector. And put your gene of interest here. So this is your gene of interest. So it will produce your desired protein. Now you can use that protein for your own purpose. Okay. So recombinant DNA technology has following applications in human health. First is gene therapy. Now, RDNA technology is used to treat different diseases by inserting new genes in place of diseased genes in the human body. This is also called gene therapy. And in order to deliver that gene in your body, you need to clone that gene first in a suitable vector. Okay. Next is Diagnosis of diseases. So, RDNA technology is used to identify molecular defects such as mutation in man. These defects are associated with various genetic diseases and cancers. Suppose a person has a disease gene and it is due to mutation. You can determine that mutation by using PCR technique. So actually PCR is a part of RDNA technology. Next is synthesis of insulin. RDNA technology allows us to develop human insulin. This insulin gene could be cloned in a vector. Next is production of vaccines. So RDNA technology allows us to develop vaccines by cloning the gene used for protective antigen protein. Since many times we use vaccine in the form of antigen, right? Viral vaccines are most commonly developed through our DNA technology. For example, influenza, herpes, foot and mouth disease, hepatitis, etc. Next, production of human growth hormone. So, RDNA technology is used to develop human growth hormone. The disease of dwarfism is treated with these hormones. So, a person who has dwarfism will not develop human growth hormone. They will not produce human growth hormone. So, in order to treat that disease, you need to treat that person with human growth hormone. So, you can clone that gene in the vector and you can make the hormone. Okay. Next is production of interferon. So interferon has the antiviral activity we all know and hence it is used to treat different uh, viral diseases as well as cancers like lymphoma and leukemia. Our DNA technology produces this protein. You can clone this interferon gene. Next is production of antibiotics. So antibiotics has the antibacterial activity and these could be produced using our DNA technology, the same funda we are using repeatedly that you can clone the gene which will produce antibiotics and then we will extract that antibiotics and we will use it in our treatment. Next is production of clotting factors. So, our DNA technology is used to produce clotting factors for treating hemophilia. The person who is suffering from hemophilia will lack some clotting factors in their body and we can treat them by providing that clotting factor uh, which he or she is lacking. So, we can make it by using our DNA technology. Next is production of erythropoietin. So, our DNA technology is used to produce erythropoietin for treating anemia. We can clone that gene. 
Next is production of tissue plasminogen activator rDNA technology is used to produce this tissue plasminogen activator for dissolving blood clots. Again, we can clone this gene. Next is production of adenosine deaminase. So, rDNA technology is used to produce adenosine deaminase for treating severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID. We can clone this gene in a vector. Next is production of anti-cancer drugs. So, our DNA technology is used to produce angiostatin and endostatin as anti-cancer drugs. Next is production of colony stimulating factors. So, our DNA technology is used to produce granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor GMCSF and granulocyte colony stimulating factor GCSF for stimulating blood cell production after a bone marrow transplantation or chemotherapy. So we know that after a bone marrow transplantation or after chemotherapy, our body require more blood cells. In order to do that, we need to deliver GMCSF, GCSF, etc. to the person. And uh, we can clone these genes in vectors. Next is production of leptin. So what is leptin? So leptin is actually used to control obesity since it regulates feelings of satiety. That means you are full, you don't need food anymore. So RTNA technology is used to produce that leptin. You can clone the gene easily in vector. Next is application in forensic sciences. RDNA technology is used in forensic science. It is probably impossible for a person to commit a crime without leaving behind a trace of his or her DNA. Here's blood strains and other items recovered from the crime scene are enough to be studied by the polymerase chain reaction or PCR. And we have different markers in our DNA and based on these, we can identify the culprit. So these are different applications of our DNA technology in human health. So this is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. If you want to get the PDF notes of this topic, please check the description box or first pinned comment. Thank you.